Good day, students. Welcome to online class. This is Ms. Adana Ogbu, and today I'll be taking a topic in agricultural science or SS2. I hope you have been staying safe and you have been studying your books as well. It is important you do that because soon enough the lockdown will be over and we will all have to go back to school. So make good use of your time while I at home. Because when you come back to school, you'll be able to continue what you've learned. So today, like I said, I'll be teaching agricultural science for SS2, and the topic is wheat. Now, let me quickly mention here that the notes for this topic that I'm treating have been sent to you on the school website. Please try as much as possible to go there and copy the notes. Now, I will also tell you a uh, mention here that the topic I'm treating on this video is for week one and week two. You know that I said on the school website, this video covers the explanation for week one and week two, and the topic is on week. So everything for week one and week two is on week. So on, in this video, I'm going to treat that topic. So now let's look at the learning objective, those things that you have to achieve at the end of this class. Number one, you should be able to define weed. Number two, state the characteristics and growth habits of weed. Mention the economic importance of weed. Give examples of common weeds with their botanical name. Explain weed dispersal. State general methods used in controlling weeds. So these are the things you should be able to learn at the end of this class. Now let's go to the class proper. Definition of weeds. What are weeds? If we quickly look into that, what are weeds? Weeds are plants that are growing where they are not needed. So weeds are plants that are growing where they are not cultivated. And generally, they are referred to as nuisances in farms. So you see them growing uh, very well in farms. So they compete with cultivated crops for sunlight. They compete with them for for water, for nutrient, and for space. So they don't give uh, the cultivated plant enough space for them to grow very well. They don't give cultivated plants the uh, enough uh, nutrients that they need for them to grow. So they are generally referred to as nuisance in farms. Now, let me give you an example. If you have a maize plant growing in a cassava farm, that maize plant is referred to as wheat at that point in time. If you have yam growing in a cassava farm, you refer to that yam as a wheat at that point in time. So any plant that is growing where it's not needed is referred to as wheat. Now, next thing, let's look at the characteristics and growth habits of wheat. Remember I told you that wheat compete for sunlight, they compete for water, they compete for nutrients, and they as well compete for space with cultivated plants. Why are they like this? Because they have features or uh, properties that make them to be able to adapt to any weather condition. Whether adverse weather condition or not, they will also do it. Imagine, in most cases, you see uh, in, during the dry season, cultivated plants will wither away, but you will see with, they will still be dead. At the time it rains once, they will, their roots comes back again. So they have uh, features that make them adapt to any weather or environmental condition. Now, the notes, your note, uh, the notes are right there in the, in the notes I said. So go there and you see all those things that I said. So they have these features that enables them to do it. Now let's take a look at something. Look at this diagram. You have two images. On the right hand side, you have a cultivated plant without wheat disturbing it. Do you see how nice and flourishing that plant is? But on this second uh, image on the left, you see that the uh, cultivated plant is suffering because there are weeds competing with it for nutrients, for sunlight, for space, and for water. So you see that the, uh, the plant is looking, um, have low quality, the leaves are not as flourishing as what you have on the, on the 
the right hand side. So it goes to show you that wheat can reduce the yield of, they reduce the yield, they reduce the quantity of plant and they reduce the quality as well. So in the presence of wheat, cultivated plants find it difficult to actually do well. Now, they have features like they can produce large number of seeds, they have spreading roots, their roots, they, they, they might even look dead, but once it's really like their roots makes them, they will germinate and start uh, uh, growing again. Then their roots are very hard to die. You, it's very difficult for their roots to die. Then you, they have other features like rhizomes, stolons, tubers, and bulbs that make them to be able to adapt to uh, adverse weather conditions. Now, next, let's look at the economic importance of wheat. Now, I've told, I told you that wheat reduces the uh, yield of plants and the quality of plants, thereby reducing the income of farmers. Now, most farmers spend a lot of money in controlling wheat. So the money that they would have used in doing other things, they will use it in controlling wheat. So their income is reduced. Are you getting what I'm saying? Their income is reduced. And then at the end of the day, if the weeds are not easily controlled, you see that the, the quantity and quality of the plant reduces. And when the farmer goes to the market to sell, sell, sell those products, he will have to sell them at cheaper rates. Then weed also serve as a, as a, as a place where uh, pests and diseases of crops can stay. So, when they stay there, they can affect cultivated crops and, uh, 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 and thereby reduce their yield again. So by the time the farmer goes to the, the market, his income is being reduced. So in general, the wheat reduce the income of farmer. But there are also uh, good things that uh, wheat can be used. The benefit of wheat is that wheat uh, can be used in cooking of local dishes. For example, water leaf is a very good example of a weed that is used for preparing local dishes. You have some other weed like central, central sima that is used for uh, as a, a local uh, 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 weed that is used for uh, curing of local aments. So these weeds, uh, they, they can be used to cure uh, aments locally and they are used by most herbalists. So weed, although they, they reduce the income of farmers, but they also have their, their some usefulness they play. Now next, let's look at the examples of weed. You have guinea grass, you have elephant grass, you have goat weed, you have stubborn grass, you have stubborn weed, you have spare grasses, and then you have water leaf. Now this is, an, this is water leaf that can be used in preparation of local dishes. Now, it's important that you know here that when you are looking at the botanical names of uh, weed, you see in most of these, you see the botanical name like Panicum maximum is in, uh, the, the first word is in, started with a capital letter and the second one started with a small letter, but both are on the line. So when you are correctly to write the botanical name correctly, you must write the first word, uh, you start the first letter with capital letter, and then the second word will start with a small letter, then you underline them. So these are botanical names of, uh, of weed, like I showed you guinea grass, you have elephant grass, you have guinea grass, you have elephant grass, you have goat weed, stubborn grass, stubborn weed, Fair grass, then you have water leaf. These are some examples that I gave. I gave quite a number of other examples in your notes. Please do where well to look at that in your notes with your botanical name. Now, next, let's look at dispersal of weed. How weed moves from one place to the other. Now, you agree with me that weeds are not actually cultivated. Nobody plants them, but they are everywhere. How come? How does this happen? Now, there are some agents, there are some things that are, yes, agents that helps in moving this weed from one place to the other. You have agents like animals and man. Animals, wind, you have uh, water, you have, uh, you have water, and then you have 
explosive mechanism. Explosive mechanism is not here in the diagram, but that's an, another way that wheat can be dispersed. Now, let me explain this to you. Now, those seeds that are dispersed by animals and man usually have features that make them attractive to this animal. For example, in this, uh, in this you see a bird eating uh, a fruit. So they have fruits that make them attractive to this animal. And why the animals are eating such food, their seed gets attached to the bodies of this animal. And also they have features that, apart from their fruit that is very attractive, they have another feature that make them to adhere to the cloth or the body of the animal. So when the animal gets to another place, they will, the seed drops and they will start germinating. So that's the features that uh, animal dispersed seeds possess. Then another uh, agent of disperser are wind. Wind uh, will blow the seeds of, uh, of wind and they will get scattered all over the place. Now, it's important that you know that the features that are possessed by wind dispersed seeds are that they are very light weighted. They have light weight. So they can be easily blown away by the wind to different places. Then you have next one, which is by water. Water can carry this seed from one place to the other. Maybe you have water bodies. Maybe when it rains, the seed that drops on the ground will flow with the uh, water to other places. And when they get the place, then they, they start germinating. Then explosive mechanism. I'll quickly use water leaf as an example to explain explosive mechanism to you. Now, water leaves possess what is known as, they possess features which make them to be uh, easily dispersed. For example, if you see that this thing that I'm pointing at, it's like a bulb. Now, when this thing gets dry, the hand sends bulb. When it gets dry, it gets scattered and then it, it breaks and scattered all over the place. That's known as explosive mechanism. And that thing that scatters can actually be blown by the wind. And then you see it dispersed to everywhere. So these are uh, agents of wind dispersal. I told you, uh, man or animals, you have wind, you have uh, water, and they have explosive mechanism. So these are... Uh, uh, agent of weed dispenser, like I told you just now. Now, lastly, we are going to look at general methods of controlling weed. That's control of weed. We have cultural method. Cultural method involves uh, regular weeding. You have bush burning. You have uh, uh, mulching. You have uh, fertilizer application. This helps in controlling weed. The mechanical or physical method has to do with physical ways, which are like uh, using holes, going, then you have something like using a physical hand, like hand picking and uprooting it from the ground. So those are physical methods. Then biological methods involve using uh, animals that can eat up those weeds. For example, goats can eat up guinea grass, elephant grass, and other weeds that are commonly known. But one of the disadvantages of biological method is that the animals that you introduce into the farm might end up eating cultivated plants instead of the weed that is supposed to eat. So that's a disadvantage. Although they will eat up the weed, but at the end of the day, they will end up going to eat up cultivated plants. So that's one disadvantage. Then you have chemical method. Chemical method have to do with using herbicides uh, to, to kill weeds. Now, that also have a, a disadvantage because the, the, the herbicide might end up killing cultivated crops as well. So although uh, with scientific discovery, there is what is known as selective, selective uh, herbicide. That means they select the weed, they will, they will not kill, they will kill weeds alone and not kill cultivated plant. But it's still, uh, it's still under process sometimes. Even the selective one end up killing cultivated crop, and sometimes they will kill only some few weeds and leave some other weeds that are not uh, that are supposed to be killed. So these are some controls of weeds. Like I mentioned, this is where we end 
the class. Like I said, how we talked about weed, and there are many things we've learned during the course of the class, the definition of weed, that there are plants growing where they are not wanted, or wanted plants. They are known as weeds. And we, uh, we talked about their characteristics that they compete with plants for sunlight, they compete with plants for water, nutrients, and space. They, they also have features that make them to be to easily adapt to any weather condition, whether favorable or unfavorable. They will talk about agents of weed dispersal. We have uh, man and animals, we have wind, we have water, and we have explosive mechanism. They will talk about the control of weed. So like I said, this note is right there in the school website. Please try as much as possible to copy the note and do the assignment. There are assignments at the end of the note. Attempt to do the assignment. With this video, you should be able to answer those questions. And if, for example, if paraventure there's something you don't understand, you can reach me out via my phone number. My phone number is right there in the school yearbook. Get across to me via WhatsApp, SMS, or phone call. I'll get back to you once I get your messages. So thank you very much for listening, and I hope to see you in the next class. Keep staying safe and keep studying your books. Thank you very much. I'm Miss Adana Obu.